Hey, this is Trey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to color grade video games using Reshade. Alright, let's get started. First of all, you're going to need to get the DirectX end user runtime. So if you're not sure if you've got that, just do a quick Google search for that and download and install it. You're obviously next going to need Reshade. Go to reshade.me, click the purple download button, and you're going to want to get reshade 1.1 if you're going to be following along with this tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be using uh, Photoshop and After Effects. Honestly, you can use whatever photo editing software that you want to use. Um, I just personally prefer Adobe products, so that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, you don't have to pay for this if you don't want to. They do offer a trial version. Um, so let's go to adobe.com, click on menu here, and click the see all. And then this pulls up here um, to get trial versions of their product. Uh, also, I'll be using the Red Giant Magic Bullet look. Um, so if you want to get a free trial of that, just go to redgiant.com. Product over here, click on the look and uh, you can get a free trial there. Uh, if you don't like using Magic Bullet Look, um, you can use DaVinci Resolve, which is uh, pretty great. And it's also free, so if you click the download button, uh, over on this right side, this is their paid version, uh, but if you go over here on the left, this is uh, totally free. Okay, so, now that we've got all the preliminaries out of the way, let's get started. So hopefully you've downloaded the base config zip file. Um, I've just uh, extracted it into this particular folder here. Uh, so all the files are here. And also go ahead and download Reshade and make a folder called Reshade anywhere in your computer and extract the contents of that Reshade zip file that you download from reshade.me. Just dump that right here. Okay, I'm gonna open up a new window navigate to where my Fallout 4 installation is. This is my current reshade configuration, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just rename that real quick so it doesn't get in the way of what we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these two to disable my ENB. And this as well. Okay. Alright, so... You got your Fallout 4 folder opened up here. You're going to need three things out of the reshade folder that you just dumped the uh, reshade contents into. So hold your control key on your keyboard and click reshade64.dll, reshade.fx, and the reshade folder. And drag these three items into your root Fallout 4 directory. As soon as that's done, Inside the Fallout 4 directory, you're going to click on uh, Reshade64. You can click on it like that, or you can uh, right-click and click Rename. And you're going to name that to DXGI. If you do not rename Reshade to DXGI, it won't load at all. Okay, so basically we now have a vanilla Reshade installation. So if I load up the game now, Reshade will run but it's not going to apply any effects because at default nothing is enabled so the next step once you've done this is go to the base config and in this directory here that says uh, to game directory open that up select both of these folders and drag these into the root fallout 4 directory now in my case i already have some of the same files and it's going to ask me to overwrite go ahead and click yes and now the base config is installed all right, so now I'm going to go into After Effects. Uh, make sure you're on that little project tab there. All right, and this folder here in, from the base config zip, grading images, just select all four of these and dump them there. Okay, so you're going to click Day and drag that to this little icon here. Do the same thing with Night. Highlights and 4K LUT. 
We're going to start with the day image. So if you don't have an effects tab already opened, just right click on the day picture there. Go to effect. And I'm going to open up magic bullet looks. All right, once that's opened up, we're going to click this edit button here. Okay, so just hover over this tool section here. And just to do the basics today to get you started really quickly, uh, just pull the color reset tool into this post section here. So let's do something really simple. Let's uh, do the typical uh, blockbuster type look. Let's grab this little white dot in this shadows color wheel here and drag this toward our cyan type blue. Now, while you're doing this, keep an eye on the actual image. Don't, don't focus so much on that color wheel. And as you drag your mouse around, do something until you feel, uh, hey, that looks cool. And then you can let go. And uh, I'm going to take the highlights now and I'm going to push them in the opposite direction. So I'm going to toggle this effect on and off, off, on. So you can see we've changed something there. So actually let's go a bit more extreme so we can see it a little better. Um, once you've got the correct shade that you want, you can grab this little line here and you can push this up to saturate more color into that area. So let's, uh, let's punch the shadows up into more of this color here and let's pull the highlights back up some more. Warm them up. Take care that you don't push the highlights too hard. You want this to still feel white. If I push it too hard, that's going to get gross. So, you know, just... If I don't have anything at all, it's too blue to my eye. So I'm just going to push it where it feels kind of warm. Okay, so toggling on and off. There's uh, the original. And here's our modification. Okay, so that looks alright. Let's go ahead and click the check mark here. So click on the looks effect, click edit, copy, or you can hit control C and uh, hit edit paste on the night image, or you can hit control V. Now toggling this on and off, this looks okay. And the reason that we do this is we want to make sure I can zoom in here on this tire. Hopefully YouTube isn't compress this uh, to death but can you see the inner ring of this tire here this is showing uh, you know your black level detail you want to be able to make out the inner ring of this tire and again YouTube may compress this to death but on my screen I can see a small difference uh, but in my opinion it's not really enough because uh, black level detail in these bushes is just pretty much smashed if I turn it off, you can see a ton of detail in the bushes here, and now the detail kind of goes away. So to compensate for that, just like this little level uh, slider here pushes more color, this controls the brightness of the shadows. So if I take this and I push it up a bit, not too much, just enough to bring some detail back, toggle it on and off. That feels much better than before. It's important that you don't smash the black levels uh, because things will get really difficult to see at night in the game. So again, I'm going to control C to copy this. We're going to go back over to day, control V to paste. Uh, there was a slight brightness shift. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to do the same slider that I used on the shadows. I'm going to use it on the midtones and pull them down a touch. Okay, that feels pretty good. Control C to copy. Paste it back over the nighttime shot again. And let's zoom in on that tire and make sure we can still see. And good, there's still some detail there. Let's check the bushes. Okay, perfect. So that's looking good. Next thing that we want to do, we want to check the highlights. And the reason that I, I use this is because I want to make sure that this sidewalk doesn't just get super blown out. So, okay, so that's looking pretty good. 
let me show you what I mean by super blown out. Let's say that you had your preset looking something like this. Let's go over to the daytime shot and do something that kind of looks good to our eye. Let's push contrast. Yeah, that looks nice. So you're thinking to yourself, yeah, that looks really great. Contrast, yay. Go ahead and paste this back over here. I I had to push this a little harder. Okay, yeah. There's a good example. Uh, let me copy this back over to day. Okay, so that, yeah, you see what this looks like on the day shot. Nice and contrasted, colors pop really well. But the same thing on the highlights effect, uh, the highlight screenshot. This sidewalk is just glowing like mad. And you want to avoid this. You don't want the sidewalk to look like the surface of the freaking sun. Let's uh, control Z to undo twice to get us back where we were before. Make sure it's consistent here. Okay, yeah, that, that's where we are. Okay. This is the preset that we've made that we settled on. Toggling on and off. Sidewalk still looks good. So now we've got a basic uh, color grade. Now we go over to the 4K LUT. And we copy those color changes over again. Now, quick explanation as to what this, uh, this LUT actually is and what it does. Um, this image has a resolution of 4096 pixels wide by 64 pixels tall and in it is every single color that your monitor can possibly display now that last statement is only true for a lot of this particular resolution uh, lots of smaller size sizes like a 256 pixel LUT or a 1k LUT they use uh, interpolation to get their color grading I prefer to use the 4K LUT because it's basically a perfect translation of the color changes that you make. So, how does this work? Let me turn the effect off. So, if I zoom in here, when I turn the effect on, you can see that it's making color changes in each of these blocks. Basically, Reshade looks at this and it knows that the texture is supposed to look like this by default. When it sees this, it compares the edited effect to the unaltered image and basically works out the math to apply the same changes that were made to this image to the entire game. Okay, so now that we've applied the effect to this LUT file, we want to make sure that we are on full resolution here before we do the next step. So make sure that says full resolution. Click on Composition, Save Frame As, Photoshop Layers. Now, I'm just going to go in here, my tutorial folder. I'm just going to save it as 4K LUT. All right, now that we have it open up in Photoshop, we're going to export it from Photoshop and save it again as a PNG. So you can hit File, Save As, or I'm going to do Control Shift S. And navigate to where your Fallout Forward directory is and go to the reshade folder custom effects textures and go ahead and overwrite the LUT base file okay so here we are in the game now once you're in the game you can use the scroll lock key to toggle reshade on and off so here's the original and here's the modification that we just made. And as you can see, the shadows are being pushed to that sort of bluish tint. And the highlights, if you look up here on that reflective metal on the noodle tower there, you can see that they, they go warmer. So moving around, we can see this in action here. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. 
Um, I'm going to be doing more advanced tutorials in the future, uh, but this is a basic one to get you started. Okay, so that about does it. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier, if you're wondering what this data folder is from the base config, um, it's just textures that are, um, if I double click one, it'll open it up in Photoshop. These are overriding the uh, Bethesda LUTs that they already have in the game. As you can see, they're a smaller resolution. They're the 256 pixel size. Um, Bethesda uses uh, LUTs as well to give the game a ton of contrast uh, right off the bat. And what I did was I just I just threw an unaffected LUT and overwrote each one of their LUTs. So what you get is basically pass through and it pretty much nullifies their color correction so that we have a good clean base to build off of. But anyway, that, that pretty much covers the tutorial. Um, please give me feedback on if this was not helpful, which will help me to make uh, better content in the future. I hope this has helped you. And if it has, let me know in the comments below or feel free to contact me on the Nexus. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.